So we know that volume is the amount of space an object takes up. We have also reviewed how to determine an object's volume. If you are still fuzzy on how to do this, go back and watch the reviewing volume video. Volume can be recorded in either milliliters or cubic centimeters. Typically, when recording the volume of a liquid, we use milliliters. And when recording the volume of a solid, we use cubic centimeters. But have you ever been given or received a shot? Look closely at the syringe and you will see that the label on this instrument is cc's. What does that stand for? Well, it stands for cubic centimeters. So in this case, we are using cubic centimeters to measure a liquid. What we want to know then is how does a cubic centimeter compare to a milliliter? To answer this question, we will need to compare a sample of water measured in milliliters to the sample of water measured in cubic centimeters. So what kind of data do we need to have? In order to compare the two units, we need to measure each sample in milliliters. We also need to measure that same sample in cubic centimeters. Measuring in milliliters is pretty straightforward. We can add any amount of water to a graduated cylinder and read the gradations. So how do we find the same volume in cubic centimeters? Well, we have water in a graduated cylinder. So what shape of water do we have inside our graduated cylinder? Luckily, we know how to find the volume of a cylinder, so we can use this formula with the amount of water in our graduated cylinder. In order to find this, we need to find the radius of our cylinder. This is pretty straightforward, but at the same time a little tricky. We could simply use a ruler to measure the diameter across the cylinder. The problem is that to get the most precise measurement, we need to be sure to go straight through the center, and this is not so easy. Lucky for us, someone has already struggled with this and designed a tool to accomplish this in a much more precise way. This tool is called a caliper. Most calipers have two sets of jaws. One set is used to measure the diameter from the outside of a circular object. The other set is used to measure the diameter of the inside of a circle. Since our water is on the inside of the graduated cylinder, we want to know the inside diameter. To read our measurement, we need to make a note of where the zero mark is when the calipers are closed. Note that the first millimeter mark is zero. Now it is also important to note that the little individual lines are millimeter marks. The lines with numbers are centimeters. When we place the jaws up against the inside of the graduated cylinder, we see that the first millimeter mark is now not quite to three. So we know for sure that the inside of the cylinder measures two centimeters. It also goes just past the seven millimeter mark. Since millimeters are one-tenth of a centimeter, we can write it as 2.7. Now we get to the place where we estimate. This line is definitely not halfway, but enough for us to easily see that it has passed the mark. So we can show this measurement as 2.72 centimeters for the diameter of our cylinder. We measured the diameter, but we need the radius, which is simply half the diameter. So the radius of our cylinder is 1.36 centimeters. Okay, so now we need to find the height of the column of water. For this we can use a regular ruler. The markings on the ruler are the same as on the caliper in that little individual lines are millimeters and the numbered lines are centimeter marks. Note that on this ruler the numbers tell you the measurement in millimeters. To record the measurement in centimeters, simply move the decimal one place to the left. Something else to be careful about is how you use the ruler. We only want to measure the height of the water column. Be sure to start at the bottom of the column of water, not the bottom of the cylinder. Also notice that zero on the ruler does not start at the end of the ruler. Precision is important. So going back to the second part of the original question, how do we determine the number of cubic centimeters in our sample of water? We needed to find the radius, which we were able to do with our calipers. We also needed to find the height of our column of water, which we did with the ruler. From here we can plug in our numbers and determine the volume of a column of water in cubic centimeters. 
So before coming to lab, you need to have a few things set up in your lab notebook. So on a new page in your lab notebook, you need the title. Our question is how does a cubic centimeter in volume compare to a milliliter in volume? Make a prediction. How do you think they're going to be related? Is one bigger than the other? Are they the same? Is there no relation? For the purposes of this lab, we will use the volume of the water in milliliters as the independent variable and the volume of the water in cubic centimeters as the dependent variable. Write a short procedure. It doesn't have to be extremely detailed, but somebody needs to be able to go through and know exactly what you did in your lab. And then you need a data table. We are taking two different types of measurements on each sample. Now we are going to graph our data. In order to have a good graph, we need at least five different data points for each group. So your group will take five samples of water and determine its milliliters and its cubic centimeters. Be sure to make a note of any questions that you can ask before you start your procedure.